Hi everyone, and welcome to the FFT for Beginners tutorial. I'm going to explain a little bit about what the FFT is and how to use it, and then we'll use it to create a simple vocoder. This tutorial uses the Easy FFT package, which you can download at the Reactor user library. And as the name implies, it's designed for beginners uh, to make FFT accessible to everybody. Um, as I mentioned, in the additive synthesis series, you can make just about any sound by adding together sine waves. And with FFT, you're doing the opposite. You're taking an audio signal and you're breaking it down into its sine wave components. Then um, you can manipulate those components and then put them back together again using an inverse FFT. So while the FFT itself is very complicated, you're not going to need to understand much of the math behind it or anything in order to do some pretty cool stuff with it. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, this ensemble is a slightly modified version of the Easy FFT Analyzer, which comes as a part of the Easy FFT package. And it simply just takes the FFT of a sample that I've loaded in and graphs it and displays it for you. So let's see what that looks like. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So you can see the x-axis of the graph is controlled by frequency, and the y-axis is controlled by amplitude. And you can drag this cursor around here, and it'll display uh, what those values are at that point in the graph. Okay, so let's go over how to work with the Easy FFT modules. The Easy FFT package comes with an audio core cell named Easy FFT Macros, um, which I find to be pretty useful. So you load that up. If you go inside, it contains every macro that comes with the Easy FFT package. And there's only a few that we're interested in today. Uh, the, EFT, the FFT ones, the IFFT ones, the inverse FFT. And then we want the vector to polar and the polar to vector macros as well. And then these 256 and 512 modules um, work almost identically. But we'll go over both of them. Okay, so let's go over the FFT256 and 512 modules. They function almost identically. They accept an audio signal as an input, and they have three outputs. Uh, the index output will be a value between either 0 and 255 or 0 and 511. Um, and they go in order, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 255 or 511, and then start back over again at 0. And then the real, the R and the I outputs stand for real and imaginary numbers. And these are kind of a pain, but we'll actually just be translating them directly into amplitude and phase signals, so we don't really need to worry about them at all. And so it turns out that the inverse FFT modules contain real and imaginary inputs uh, that you can run the FFT outputs directly into. And um, let's take a look at how that would look. Just give the FFT module an input and the inverse module an output here, and then connect the real and imaginary inputs to their counterparts and um, this will actually do basically nothing it'll break the sound into its sine wave components and then the inverse FFT will put them back together again and it'll go to the output and um, the FFT and inverse FFTs do cause delays so other than being a delay line that won't do much of anything else now these real and imaginary numbers do contain useful information for us, but it's pretty hard for us to use them in their present form. So we're going to use this uh, Cartesian coordinate to polar coordinate 
um, macro here to translate the real and imaginary into amplitude and phase, which is <clears throat> something we're much more used to working with. And then we have the inverse of that module as well, so in between these two points is where the uh, exciting stuff is going to happen between the two converters between real and imaginary and amplitude and phase. Alright, so as I promised before, uh, let's use these FFT modules to create a simple vocoder. The first thing I'm going to do is load up the easy FFT macros, and then uh, we're only going to use these four macros at the bottom here, in the bottom left hand corner, so let's move those out of the way and delete the rest. And then we're going to create two inputs to this macro, uh, and the first one is going to be for a speech signal, um, and the second one is going to be for a pitched signal, something like a, a synthesizer, or a sine wave or something. And um, we're just going to translate the real and imaginary into amplitude and phase, and duplicate this whole thing to be our second input. And now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the amplitudes by each other. So we are imprinting the pitched signal's amplitude onto the uh, speech signal. And then we're going to use the phase of the pitched signal as well uh, when we put everything all back together again, like this. And this is going to be the basic body of our vocoder. pretty simple to put together, right? So now I'm just going to build a simple structure around this um, to kind of show it off a little bit and we'll use the sample I played earlier and try to turn it into more of a, a robot voice sound. Um, so I can go ahead and create a, a sampler module to start out and load in the sample and next we're going to create a MIDI gate to trigger it and whenever the gate's on we'll have the amplitude set to 1 This will simply just play back the sample every time we press any note at all. <clears throat> and we'll run that into the speech input. And then to start, let's just create a simple sawtooth oscillator for the pitched input. And again, uh, we'll create a, a pitch in and we can turn it on whenever the gate is on using the output of the compare module once more and we can run the output from there directly into the pitched input of the vocoder. Now just connect and turn everything to mono. Alright, so I don't even know if you can hear that, but I just played it back and it's way too quiet and I've left out a step of adding in an amplifier here, which is very simple. I'll just um, change some of the values here to give it more of the range we need. And we like to boost this signal really loudly if we have to. Um, it can get pretty quiet because the amplitudes are generally between 0 and 1, so when you multiply them together they're not getting any larger. So let's set this to a reasonable value and then see what it sounds like. And now let's check it out at a much lower pitch. Okay, so this is close to the sound I'm going for, but uh, a real problem that we're having is this sawtooth is just not really up to snuff. Uh, we're going to need a much fuller uh, sound to really get a good vocoder sound out of this. So what I'm going to do is delete these inputs and 
uh, create a laser base instrument and I'm just going to use that as the input to our uh, our pitched sound this is going to give us a much better sound all around so let's check that out on the panel just to rearrange it so we have better access to laser bass which is a little more interactive than uh, the vocoder that we've just made and I'm going to set that to be the master snapshot so we can get the access to all the snapshots up top here and then let's check out some some laser bass snapshots with our vocoder sound here all right so that's better uh, let's just check out a few more Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ten, nine. All right, so that's it for this first FFT tutorial. I hope you guys had fun.